Hello, and this is part two. So if you haven't already done this, look at part one, set your system up for OpenSCAP, and then come back to this video. Um, yeah, if you finish all of the stuff in there, then you'll be ready to just follow on. So we finished that episode basically with a score of 76.3%, which isn't great. It's not the worst, but you know we could be a lot better. So what we're gonna do in this demo is we're going to use OpenSCAP to create an Ansible playbook that we're gonna run against our server and that will then fix our um, server to be compliant with the CIS benchmark, you know, and it's gonna get a much higher score. It's gonna be a lot better, a lot more secure in terms of a hardened server. Okay, so we still have our server here. This is the one we used last time. This is our report. So what I'm gonna do, let's quickly rename the report. So uh, and I'm gonna rename it to old report if I, just, if I move it there we go okay so if we now double check here that's gone but if we look at old it's back so we can keep a copy so what we'll do is when we do another scan after we've done the Ansible code we'll come back and look and we'll be able to compare the difference okay so we've got another gist for you this time it's the OCP uh, sorry, OSCAP Ansible. And this first link just takes us to a demo page here where there's quite a lot of information here, but I've picked out the bit that I need. So this will be in the um, in the gist and the gist will be in the description. So just, you can use it for reference, but we're gonna just follow these commands. So we generate the report first. So we've already done this. Um, now what we can do, without doing anything else, we can use Answer, uh, use OpenSCAP to generate an Ansible report based on our playbook. So I don't think I included this command in my last one. So let me check. Yeah, that isn't in there. So we're going to. So what we're going to do is we're going to rerun the report, but this time we're going to generate this arf.xml, and then we're going to use that to generate the playbook. So let's run the report again. So it's still going to put everything in the same place. That's that's fine. But it will generate an extra file, which is that arf.xml. So let's just watch this whiz through. So I'm going to stop and then um, I'll pause it. And then when I get my command line back, I'll put it back. See you in a sec. Okay, that's just finished. So let's get on with it. So if we now look in slash temp, we can see that we have this ARF file, nice big file, which is good. So now we're going to use OpenSCAP to generate. So you don't have to give it the fully qualified name. Oh, actually, no, that's fine. Yeah, so up here, when it comes to profile, you don't have to give it the full path. You can just give it the profile name. So let's run this command now. So this one's going to generate the fixed type Ansible. There are others, you can do bash as well. I think there's a couple others uh, as well. So if we just Use them. Oh, lost the cut. Okay, so that's running. So did it do it? Oh. Let's view the playbook. Start going down. So this is really this is great seeing all this shift G. Let's go to the bottom. So this is really, really powerful. So instead of having to go in and try and manually update all this stuff. OpenSCAP generates an Ansible playbook for you, and this is it. And it's it does everything. <laughs> you know, if it can, it will. Obviously, it won't create extra mount points for temp, var temp, var log, or anything like that. But it will do everything else it do. So SSH config will then you know remote permit root login would be no, or without passwords you can log in keys that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, now you've got a playbook. It's completely customizable. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull that playbook over to our server, so map back onto my web server, and that one. So if run the SCP command, my key to that server, and it's called playbook.yml, pretty sure it is, yep. And we just want that in our home drive, so let's just do squiggle.
no such file directory. One sec, pause this. Okay, I saved it to my home drive. So it's not here at all. It's home EC2 user playbook. Okay. And there it is. So June the 28th, 1127. Yeah, that's right. So back to the gist, all we now need to do is I've got a host or any, so if I update my IP address in there, so I do assume that you know how to use Ansible for this, but if you don't, just message me, uh, leave a comment and I can give you a hand if you're having any particular difficulties. So let's put the IP address, so this is the IP address of my remote server. I don't need to put the username in because it's the same user and this is my PEM key. So let's save that. So now I'm set up ready to go. I should be able to run this command and this will use the playbook and run it against my remote server and I give it root access would become because I've already got um, sudo privileges set up. So if I hit enter on that, this connects and it should then start going through everything else. Okay, that's fine. So that's going to run. I'm going to leave that to run. And then what I'll do is I'll stop. Um, I'll just speed this video up a lot at this point so that we can see, you can see it running through. Okay, we're done. So that took about five minutes. Um, it might be different on different servers or different OSs, that's fair enough, or depending on what your which benchmark you're trying to comply to. Um, so that was pretty quick, that just saved a lot of time. <laughs> if you run that on a golden image, then, and you then close that image and then use that to build with, you've now got a CIS compliant, compliant build image. Um, you can, if you want to change some of that stuff, so you don't want to comply with some rules for a particular reason in your organization, you can just find it in the Ansible playbook and you can delete it. So it won't touch that bit. Right, so now that we've got this, the next step is to rerun our report and then take that take that file off and check it against the old one, see what's happened. So let me just copy that again. So that will rerun the report. That'll take a second. I'm going to pause while that runs. It takes about two minutes. Okay, so that's finished. So that should have generated us a new report. So if we just have a look, in temp. Oh, we can see that it's there. 11:35. 11:35. So that's the right report. So we go back in, and I've got the command ready here. So we're just going to copy it over. Okay, so these are the results. If I just copy that into a new one and take off old report. So we've now got a new one. So let's just bring it in line. So the old one, that said 76%, 134 rules. This one, we scroll down. Look, we're only missing 16 rules and we're now 95% compliant. So as you scroll down, that's it. You know, you can probably even set bootloader password in Grub, you know, and that'd be done. That, that's it, that's the whole report, that's all the stuff that's wrong. But then in this one, we're scrolling and we're scrolling and we're scrolling down. So you can see suddenly, 10 minutes of your time, you've now got a server that's 95% compliant with CIS rules. You know and you can customize that yourself you know there's a few others here with failed and some high ones but that's absolutely fine you know you can go and fix those manually if you can so there yeah, there you go if you like this content subscribe like the page and i'll see you in the next video cheers